Hey guys, it's uh, Kim from editing. I realized that the clip of me introducing this video somehow got deleted. So, um, this is a video I meant to introduce as uh, using my comfrey tea that I made about six weeks ago as fertilizer. So, here you go, and here's uh, into the second part. Now, what's cool about this fertilizer is that comfrey itself actually contains nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus, which is the NPK, I'm not in the right order, but of uh, traditional, like, store-bought fertilizers. Uh, plus, comfrey has a very long taproot, so it draws up like trace minerals and nutrients from deep in the ground and brings it up to the surface. So um, from what I've read, comfrey tea can actually be more effective than any of your traditional fertilizers such as manure, um, store-bought, granular, all of those things. And plus, uh, I don't know about you, but if you know anything about uh, manure as fertilizer, it has to sit a very long time to be, uh, to be able to be used on your garden plants because it has so much nitrogen in it that it will burn the roots of your plants. So I'm very excited about having this to use. Normally you would want to apply this at night so that it has uh, the whole night to absorb through the leaves because I'm going to use this as a foliar spray. But today is a nice overcast, cool day. It's low humidity. The sun's not going to be out to burn uh, the leaves from the moisture on them. Uh, there's a nice breeze so that uh, the moisture isn't combating with like the humidity in the air and it's just stagnant and wet. You don't want your tomato plants to be stagnant and wet. Okay, so I put my comfrey bucket back underneath the shelter of our woodshed. I am just gonna top it off with water. This will last me the rest of the summer probably, but the more you dilute it, uh, the more tea you will need to use uh, compared to water the next time you go to use this fertilizer. But it will stay good for me all summer. It's just gonna be stanky, so it's gonna be outside. <laughs> I just got super duper duper carried away with weeding, but look guys, we're making progress. Do you see that? You can see through, there's airflow. Okay, now we come down here and it's a jungle in between the rows. And honestly, I don't have that much to weed, so, but that's gonna have to wait because I need to get this fertilizer on. But first, um, before I do that, I'm going to go through and pick all the tomatoes that are uh, either all the way ripe or mostly ripe. I've been picking my tomatoes on the lesser ripe side because my garden is back here, like my house is way up there. So it's back here in the boonies where there's no human activity and things keep munching on my tomatoes. So I would rather have a minimally less uh, flavorful tomato that is actually edible and ripe in the house uh, than to leave it out here so that some little critter can enjoy all my tomatoes. And I need to get them harvested before I spray all this fertilizer on there because while it's natural, organic, I could easily wash it. Do I really want to? No. So I'm going to go through and pick everything that I see that needs picked and then I will be spraying my fertilizer. I was gifted these collapsible produce crates and it really works in handy but I didn't check this one before I brought it out here and she's missing an end but it still works um, these are what I picked today which are mostly cherries but last night I just picked everything was ripe so this is just what turned overnight I'm sitting here and I feel sprinkles if I just did this whole thing 
and I can't even spray because there's no point in spraying if it's going to rain so I guess I'll wait a few minutes and see I'll be back okay so I got pushed out of the garden by what I thought was just a little sprinkling rain shower but has actually lasted the last hour and there's another hour or two on the radar which I'm not gonna complain about at all but this kind of thing literally only happens to me when I need to do something outside anyway but I've had this um, just a few little cucumbers in my fridge for the past couple days needing to do something with them and I don't have enough I am the kind of person that if I do something it's like all of it or nothing and so the thought of processing this little tiny batch of cucumbers was just like not on my radar but if I leave them any longer I won't be able to do anything with them so I'm just gonna make a little batch of pickles while I wait on the rain to stop and I also wanted to share um, my favorite pickle recipe of all time now I did not come up with this this is not my recipe if any of you follow, um, she's on Instagram. Her name is Ruth Ann Zimmerman. She's an ex-Mennonite and has amazing recipes. Cooking and canning. And this, um, I canned this last year. And I'm really glad that I canned so many of them because we're still eating them. And they're still just as good as they were. So, and this is like my family's favorite pickle recipe. Normally, I don't like sweet pickles. Like, I don't really like bread and butter pickles. I don't really like, like the store-bought, like little sweet pickles. I don't like them. But these are delicious. So, last year I tried probably five different kinds of pickle recipes on the quest for the greatest pickle because my family loves pickles. And so I settled on two favorites that I think I'm gonna stick two from now on and one was just a regular dill pickle recipe that I got out of the ball canning book it's basic but it's delicious and the other one is this is Ruth Ann's um, sweet pickle recipe so I'm gonna get to work chopping these up I have gotten already the stem end and the blossom end taken off and these vary in size like I've got little tiny ones because I want them to be crunchy the best kind of pickle or the best kind of cucumber to pickle is when they're still small and this is actually I've planted probably four or five four or five different cucumber varieties and these are the only ones producing right now so this might be one of my new favorites this seed I got on sale from Johnny's last year at the end of the season I got like something like 200 seeds an insane amount but it was on sale and your girl loves a good sale but um, I had never tried them before before but they were called salt and pepper because it's a white cucumber um well when they're small they're still green but uh it's a white cucumber variety it's like the sister of the silver slicer but it's a small variety so i thought i'd like it because i like the silver slicer and so far so good because these are the first producing and they're super crunchy okay i'm gonna get these chopped up and i'll tell you the ingredients I thought I recorded me chopping all these, but I don't think it recorded. So just imagine that I chopped them. For each pint jar, it calls for two cloves of garlic and one teaspoon of dill weed. Um, I have fresh dill, so I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna wing it because those ingredients don't matter. Also, I'm gonna gonna use more garlic than it calls for because I have smaller cloves of garlic from this from the smaller heads that I have. But I wanted to show you this invention that quite literally changed my entire life in the kitchen, at least. So I don't know, I don't know why this invention isn't sold with garlic that you buy from the store. Like this should just come in with it. And I bought this on Amazon. So just look for a garlic peeler on Amazon and I'm sure this will pop up. It's like this little silicone tube. You put your garlic in there, okay? You put it in the center. You roll it. And, okay, that wasn't a good example. It comes out clean. You don't have to get your fingers sticky. You don't have to peel it. It, I wish I had this when I was peeling all that garlic to put in the honey. And I was peeling all that garlic to put in my other recipes because this little invention, whoever made this is, an actual genius 
because I don't know if you're like me, but I literally hate peeling garlic. Like it comes out clean. And then all the little thingies are inside and you just smack it on your countertop and get it all out. This thing is amazing. I'm shocked every single time. I pulled my dill out of the freezer. So a good way to preserve your dill and because I had dill, it's just a stick. I had dill before I actually had anything to pickle. So I would pick it and then put, and then um, wash it off, put it in this baggie in the freezer. And now I can just pull out whatever I need and use it like it was fresh. So I'm going to put about four small, small cloves of garlic in each jar and then the pickles and you kind of have to tetris these cucumbers in so it all fits well and then i'm gonna put a nice dill by the way my pickled beets turned out really good actually and i don't like beets at all and my little hunter ate like half a cup's worth before I had to say like, hey, no more because your belly's going to hurt because it's um, fermented. Uh, so he really liked them. We all really like them. So if you don't like beets, try to grow them anyway because they are really good for you. And if you ferment them with dill and garlic like a pickle, 10 out of 10 would recommend. Anyway, back to stuffing these cucumbers in the jar. Now that I've got my cucumbers in here, you really want to give it a good inch of headspace because you're going to fill the liquid up. I just use the bottom of this um, jar. Wide mouths for me are harder to judge the distance on for whatever reason because there's no like neck where it starts to taper. It's just one big open hole. So I'm going to fill my jars and then I'll tell you how to make the brine. I've got my uh, jars ready my child I've got my jars ready and now I need to fill them with the brine so the little cucumbers I had made four jars which is honestly more than I thought it would and plus I've got a couple left over to eat as a snack in a pot on the stove I'm gonna boil together the original recipe for seven jars is two cups of white vinegar just your classic 5% vinegar three cups of sugar which sounds like a lot that's why it's so good two tablespoons of salt and two cups of water and then when those are boiled together you're just going to pour them over your jars and process i'm going to process these just like i process the peach jars in the steam canner because there's enough vinegar and sugar in here to preserve it the old school way like without even canning it but to be safe i will put them in my steam canner So I'm just going to, with a funnel, pour the brine over and you're going to want to leave about one inch of headspace. Um, a lot of people use a chopstick to get the air bubbles out, but I don't have one, so I'm just going to use the other side of this to just kind of poke in there, get all the air bubbles out. That Getting the air bubbles out ensures that your jar will seal better. And then when you're in here messing around, 
You might find that you need to add a little more brine or you stirred up all your vegetables inside so now you need to pack them back down. And then with my vinegar rag, I'm gonna wipe the rim of my jar to make sure it's nice and clean so that the lid will seal to the top of the jar. Because a lot of times, especially with something with this much sugar in it, makes everything sticky if you drip it a little bit. And vinegar will clean it off. Okay. Now I just washed and dried my lids with hot soapy water. So I'm just gonna put the lid on. Okay. Now I'm just gonna put them onto my steam canner. And I'm going to process these jars once it starts, um, once it's to the right pressure, you start the timer and I'm just going to process these for five minutes. This might go against the ball canning uh, recommenda recommendations for canning pickles, but um, this is a tried and true method from people that didn't have the internet to tell them how to do something. They trusted their grandma to tell them how to do something and they're all still alive and kicking today. So use your best judgment on if you want to follow this recipe or not. If you don't feel safe processing it for only five minutes, process it for 10, which is the standard for pickles. But this has so much vinegar and sugar in it that that acts as a preservative anyway. And as long as your jar is sealed and everything you used was clean, I feel comfortable um, processing at five. My timer just went off. Mmm, I touched the pan. Anyway, my timer went off. I turned the heat off. Now I'm just gonna slide it off of the heat for five minutes and then you can take the lid off. That is gonna leave a mark. Now that I burned myself, I'm gonna take my comfrey salve. I actually made this um, one last year. Put it on my boo-boo. Okay, my pickles are done. I'm just going to take them off the heat. Oh, I was supposed to spread that out first. I'm just gonna take them off the heat and put them on a dry towel. And that's all you have to do is just leave them alone for 24 hours. If they're not sealed by tomorrow, you can reprocess them. Also, but cucumbers get mushier, so just put them in your fridge and eat them like fridge pickles. It's later in the day. I'm back outside and I'm ready to spray my plants. So. I have this pump sprayer. I'm just going to pressurize it, which is hard right now because it's really full. I am going to take this sprayer and I'm not just gonna spray the tops of the leaves. I'm actually gonna point it upwards and spray the underneath side. The whole point of foliar feeding is there's um, underneath the plant's leaves are called stomatas. It's like little holes where they can take in the nutrients um, to better absorb. So I'm going to make sure I'm spraying all underneath uh, the leaves of the plant. And that's it, guys. It's pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to give them a little happy dose of this um, foliar feed. And I'm hoping that it will perk everything up. Why do I hear thunder? It's not thunder, it's a dump truck. Never mind. I'm really getting underneath all of these uh, leaves the best that I can. It's not just tomatoes that benefit from this uh, fertilizer. You can spray literally everything. I think that my most important things that I'm gonna spray today I'm gonna spray all of my tomatoes, um, all of my peppers, and my squash plants that the squash bugs have started to take over. I've been hand picking both bugs and eggs off, but if you've battled squash bugs, they are relentless. So what I do to combat the squash bugs is I 
plant them in successions. I think I've got three different successions going on and that will ensure me, hopefully, fingers crossed, squash all summer. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Until next time.